All right, so what I got in the vise here is a Mustad R50 size 16 dry fly hook, standard size. Uh, I typically uh, have been tying these on an 18, a 16 and a 14. An 18 re will require two feathers, a 16 three and a 14 four. Um, and you'll kind of see why in a minute. Uh, thread I'm using is tan uni thread 80. And we'll just get started. I'm going to start my thread right behind the eye. I'm just going to come back just a little ways. Don't need to go crazy. And just make sure this stuff is all wrapped in. I'll come up, come back about half the distance there to the eye of the hook. Next, what I'm going to do is grab. I got some tan uh, mallard flank, barred mallard flank. And I'm just going to grab a bunch of them. Um, uh, in reality, I'm using these for future measurement uh, and not the fly itself per se. Uh, although you can leave them in for the horns if you want. So I'm going to get the distance for my horns. Uh, I want those horns to be just a little bit longer than the hook shank. So I'm trying to get a, there we go trying to get a good distance. Let's put a couple in. I'll throw one under to kind of prop them up and then I'll come back just a little ways and trim that off. Bring my thread back up to basically right behind right behind the um, horns there. Sorry, the mallard flank. Next, what you need is you need three CDC feathers for a size 16. And you need these feathers in order to do this uh, in one shot. These feathers need to be three times the length, at minimum, three times the length of the entire hook shank. So you want to really make sure you take your time and uh, gauge that accordingly. Because if you don't have them long enough, you won't be able to complete the fly right. Next, what you want to do is you want to come into the butts and just strip a little bit off of every side. And we're going to line these up again. We're going to so they're stacked one on top of another. Then I'm going to place some of the bare stem right above my uh, right above my thread. I want to put two wraps in and I'm just going to kind of pull tight. I'm going to take my right thumb, right index. I'm going to kind of gather everything that's out front. I'm going to try to keep these stems uh, with the tips even and the stems on top of one another. And, and I'm going to draw back and as I draw them back and pull everything through, I'm going to pull. You can see I'm pulling my, with my left hand up. And what I'm looking to do here is make sure that my feathers or my, the tips of my CDC are standing out in front of my uh, mallard flank. Well, I'm having a hard time with that tonight. <laughs> I keep looking at it like, what is that? What is that? So once you have them out just a little bit in front of that mallard flank and sitting on top of your hook shank, we can now start winding these guys back. We want to keep everything directly on top. And we're going to take it back to the barb. Of course I say directly on top and it doesn't want to work. There we go. Uh, for a little added protection, this is optional, uh, but I've got some extra extra small gold wire. I'm going to just tie in on the side. Bring it to the length of the body, take my thread back up. Uh, not necessary, uh, but if you want that extra added, my fly is not going to get destroyed feeling, uh, at least on the first hit, then that's what you want to do. Next, we're going to get three more CDC feathers in a different color. And the, the colors, uh, I'm just using these colors because I've, I've seen some caddis around that uh, uh, when I was doing some research, I should say, 
uh, that are similar in color. So I've got ginger here and I've got cinnamon here. And I'm just going to line these tips up as well. That tip did not line up. Of course, I even had them stacked and everything, and then I start shooting the video, and they come apart. Typical. 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 Okay. So we're going to line those tips up, too. And I'm just going to tie them in right behind the wing and kind of pull those back as well and I missed that one of course I did because it moved on me I think that feather's just a little shorter anyway there we go we'll capture it and get it in there and I'm gonna move take or I'm sorry I'm gonna wrap all these into the back well this is obviously not my best video as far as talking is concerned uh, what I've also done on a couple of the flies uh, let's see if I can find one I can show you is I've incorporated ice stub into the body and you can use a Petajon magic tool and, and skip using the stems where you where you just uh, well if you know what the Petajon magic tool is uh, you just incorporate all that into there uh, otherwise you can kind of split these open like that and just lay some uh, some of your uh, flash dub in there and twist it or ice dub uh, either way what I'm going to do next is I'm going to collect all of these so that they're together and I'm going to put them on, I'm going to have a hackle plier and grab all three. And then I'm going to twist a few times just so those stems help reinforce one another. Oop, bring my thread back up before I forget. And now I can proceed to wrap my body. All right. And give it the old crisscross applesauce. Get it tied in. And if your thread comes back a little ways, don't worry about it. I mean, everything gets hidden here pretty well. Next up, sorry, I'm not in camera. I'm going to come underneath and trim that out. Usually I do that on top, but I kind of rolled it. Uh, and I want to get those stems out of there. Um, then we can take our wire and bring it forward again the wire is going to kind of get hidden and all that cdc so you don't have to have like really super perfect turns here or anything uh, it's just to reinforce those stems is all it's for uh, and it's again it's optional I, I tie it both ways here with and without and just lock all that down it's meant to be a quick tie it's that you know obviously it's faster if you're not yakking at a camera and so then I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to trim all of my body color CDC off. Um, I've tried every which way from Sunday so far to leave that stuff on and when the fly hits the water it, it tips it. So that's all. I've got to get shaven pretty clean. Make sure I'm going to put another wrap in up front and kind of pull everything to the back. There we go. Next, I'm going to grab everything out back. I'm going to grab it by the tips, and I can kind of stroke all that stuff back. I'm going to line it up on top of all my other threads. So it li literally, like if you think of the elk hair caddis, how it's got like that thread base uh, just before the head, uh, it's similar to that here. And then as I pull them apart, I'll throw a thread wrap in between each one. Get them to stand up for me. Come in, trim those out, and then again, I come trim this any stem. Looks like I got pretty much all of it on that one. All that out. Put another couple in. Okay, so then next. Uh, this part you can decide whether or not you want to leave these up front. If not, you can trim them off, wrap them back, whatever you want to do. We're going to take all this and we're going to fold it to the back. And then the goal here is to get all these, which this part gets a little tricky, is to get them to all to lay flat. 
so that they give that big presence uh, or impression from underneath on the water. And, and once you kind of have it, I found not to mess with it and just tie it in. So I'm going to tie it in right on top. So kind of like the Elkhair Caddis has that head that flares open, uh, this is kind of that same idea right there. And so that the wing opens up in the back. So you still keep this hull, this super, you know, super bugginess with this big flat wing. So the presence underneath the water is, is pretty good, actually, as far as imitating a caddis. And then I'm just going to come in and whip finish. And uh, really, that's it. Yeah, I'm going to add just a drop of super glue up under those thread wraps to make sure that they stay in place. Uh, you can go through and groom it if you want. Uh, or whatever. You know, it's meant to be a quick tie that's going to float pretty much all day long. That's the idea here. Give a big, give, give a big presence for a caddis on the water. Um, so you come in and um, leave those horns in like that. You can take them out. Whatever you want to do. So uh, there it is. Oh, I'll tell you what. You also want to make sure that when you do this, you come in and get all this, all this stuff off the side. You want it. You want it pretty, pretty well trimmed underneath and just off underneath to the side, because uh, it does affect the landing a little bit, uh, and the fly will tip. Uh, so there's my CDC caddis. Uh, do it in whatever colors you need. And I'm just going to take it. I'm going to drop it in my water. And I'll bring it up so you can see. Maybe. You can see how that. Oh. The hook sits down nice and right underneath the top there, and I can't. I, I tip, I've got it too full. I'm gonna move the camera. So there it is. So it sits right on top of the water, just like that. So it's got a good, good presence in the water. So anyway, tie some up, take them out fishing. Easy tie. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Always appreciate that. Uh, check out the other videos, and uh, you can catch other things that we're doing over at Fly Tires for Beginners on Facebook. Answer the, uh, answer the questions, and that's your golden ticket in. Uh, happy tying, everybody. We'll see you later.